morning everybody so my montana load is here as you can see behind me it's sitting over there in the side street shipper's a little uncomfortable we're in a city it's very tight down here i'm actually going to drive his truck and then we're going to get unloading here we're going to do one truck at a time so you get to see the whole unload process and then we'll be kicking out individual videos on the trucks that came in so stay tuned and here we go It's not like it'll take me like two minutes to get over there. Where'd he go? He left. I have no idea. I saw him outside for a second. So the driver disappeared. I was getting ready to drive his truck around the block, but he disappeared. So we're gonna talk about these real quick while they're here. So first kind of look at this cab corners and the steps and everything. This truck is like rot free. Watch your back, Shane. Um, but we got a lot of cab dents on the back of this cab over. This is a big model. This is a 450. So this is gonna be a wide fender model. This probably has a 3026 in it. We have 29 Model A, it's really nice, really solid car. Uh, looks very complete, no rust in the rear wheel wells, that's where they usually go. Uh, this long bed C10, it's got the typical over door swing damage, we can fix that. It looks nice and straight, it's a long bed, but nice half ton, nice patina truck. So, here's the driver, I'm getting ready to drive this thing around a block, and see you guys in a minute. Ready buddy? This one. We got the skid loader. We're gonna grab it with the machine, with the bobcat. Yeah. What do you think, Bill? Can you grab these rears? I think you can pull it from right here.
Do not like chains.
Nope, no inner tube. Oh. Nah, I think this truck's too too late of a model to have tubes. They quit that in the 50s. Alright. Now we're just gonna have to drag it. I'm thinking put the winch on it.
good stuff.
turns turns easy so we're gonna take this one in the shop first this one has a title and it's really nice besides that big pillow dent this one's gonna be pretty easy to get going so we're gonna take that low-hanging fruit do this one first the truck has like an incredible patina to it one of the best sun fades ever go near drive Did I get air in both of the yeah. Keep filming.
so this is the 55 first series. It's not a 54, it's a 55 first series, okay? Five window, six cylinder, it turns. We're gonna get this thing running. Uh, probably not today, but we'll have it running next week. We have gotta fix the flats on it. Probably not gonna have brakes, we'll see how it runs. We might do brakes on it. Really, really cool truck. These trucks have a different dashboard in them for 54 and 55. This truck does have some rust in the floors. Dent, dent side fender. 54 and 55 models had flat bed rails. So 54, 55 first series rather had these flat bed rails. We'll see if we got a correct rear bumper for it since this one's been all busted off. Pop these dents out of the fenders. This truck for sure is gonna need floor pans and cab corner repair, but other than that, it's a pretty solid straight truck. We'll get it running, we'll get it driving. This truck does have a title, so it's part of the reason we picked this one first because it's gonna go pretty quickly. But yeah, just a really nice, really hard to find truck. 55 first series don't come along often. This is how you tell. This is the 55 first series emblem right here. Other than that, 54 pretty much looks the same. This, like every 54, 55 first series always has this dinger right here. This, this grill sticking out this far in the front of the truck, they pretty much never survive. But, yep, fix the headlight, clean it, pressure wash it, get that firewall all nice and clean. Uh, we'll be showing you guys all that. We're gonna get a time lapse set up on the pressure wash and make sure we show you guys the clean up here and getting it running. First thing I'll probably do is take a compression test, see if we got any issues see what the oil is like. Sometimes we change the oil on these, sometimes we don't. That's something I wanted to address and I'm gonna do that now on this truck. We've had people make comments like, oh, you didn't even change the fluids. Well, the reason why we don't always change the fluids right off the bat is when you're trying to get these things running, if they have compression issues and you're gonna be pumping the cylinders up and down, trying to get rings to seat or messing with the valves or stuff like that, you're gonna be washing a lot of garbage down into the crankcase. So like, PB Blaster, WD-40, regular motor oil we put in cylinders sometimes when we have like a dry cylinder we're trying to get a ring to get what, a piston ring. And that's all going to wash around those cylinders and go right into the crankcase. So it's a big waste of oil to change the fluids when you're just trying to get the cylinders wet. These have been sitting forever. So a lot of times you have cylinders that are really, really dry or they have rust in them or whatever. So until we get it to a better standing, we don't change the oil. Now we always do change the oil in these, but sometimes it's not at the beginning of the process. We do it after it's running. Just get it running enough that it idles and then we say, okay, cool, now we're gonna put fresh oil in it. So just wanted to touch on that. As far as the fuel system goes, we'll isolate the tank from the fuel system. We'll put a new fuel filter on here. We'll flush these steel lines out. And what we'll do is just run a jumper hose from the fuel pump on that side of the block into a little one gallon can. Then we know we have nice fresh fuel. Bill will pull the carb off, clean out the carb. Not always, we don't always have to rebuild the carb. It just depends on how they are. Sometimes they need rebuilt, sometimes they don't. Um, sometimes they just need cleaned out, clean out jets, stuff like that. Get old varnishy, sticky fuel out of there. Stick it back on, see how it runs. We do rebuild a lot of carbs though. I have these in stock rebuilt sitting on the shelf. So sometimes we do that too. We'll just grab one off the shelf, toss one on here to get it running and then rebuild the other one. This truck looks to be very complete and original. Everything is correct under the hood as far as I can see here, except the air cleaner, but still has the oil filter mounted on the side here. Um, it's the correct carb. Obviously this is newer. They put this on here. This isn't correct. This would have had an oil bath air filter on it, which we'll probably put on a pile of those things. So, but yeah, I expect this one to run and drive pretty easily. I believe this is a four shift truck. Yes, it is. Um, so uh, some other things that we typically do on these is a new choke cable. It really makes it easy for the next person to, uh, to move the truck around and stuff like that. We don't put a ton of effort into these. And this is again, to address some of the comments and say, why didn't you do this or that or the other? The chances of somebody keeping this original, very, very low. This will most likely end up on a custom frame with an LS engine. So really we get it running for more of a nostalgic thing, makes it very easy to, to move around and it really gets the shipping cost down. When they don't run and drive, the shipping cost is on average about 20 cents more per mile, which is a lot. So if we can get that cost back down into the 90 cents a mile area versus like a dollar 20 or whatever, they're rising every day because of the price of fuel. Ultimately, it helps the end user. So I get a little bit more money out of the truck. I'm giving a better product to the buyer and it saves them on shipping. So it's kind of all around 
good thing to do is try and get these things running. All right, so at this point, we're gonna let Bill get his hands on it. He's gonna probably do wheels and tires today, and then we'll see what time it is. We'll probably hit it on Monday, getting it running. Um, and we'll get a pressure wash today since it's raining anyways, but stay tuned and we'll be having a whole YouTube video on this truck. All right, so right now we're gonna head across the street. I'm gonna show you the other five trucks. Um, and then we're gonna do one video on fixing up each one of those trucks. So you're gonna have six more videos coming out, one for each truck. Will it run? Will it start? Will it move? All that good stuff. So let's go. So this truck I'm super excited about. This is part of our Montana load. This is a 49 GMC one ton long bed. This truck is showing me everything I need to see to say this is probably gonna run. All right, so we had the hood open on this truck earlier. Can't get the hood open now. The latch is giving us a little bit of an issue. So we'll get that when we get it in the shop, but motor's totally complete in this one. I expect this one to run. This truck, all four wheels, tires are on it. Tires aired up. Transmission works because I clutched it off the trailer. Um, it is totally complete. So this truck, I've had two of these in the past. This is a one ton long bed and this has a, a hydraulic tilt bed on it. So the whole pickup truck bed on this one actually dumps on a PTO. So that's really cool. I love these long bed trucks personally. A lot of people don't like them. I think they look great when they're on the ground. I think this thing looks great as it is. It's a great color. This is probably originally some kind of orange and it's faded now to like a beautiful patina hugger orange. Really like that. Doesn't have the correct tailgate, but I have a GMC tailgate for it. So we're good on that front. Really excited about getting this one into the shop and we'll have a title on this truck too. So stay tuned for this one. This one's gonna be a lot of fun. So this one here, we got a 54 GMC cab over, which bread and butter for me, I deal with a lot of cab overs. I love these things. It's a 450 model, so this is a big boy. This has got the 302 six cylinder in it. Really nice, complete truck. Needs a little bit of loving. I don't know if the engine turns. It's, they're not as easy as a pickup. I can't reach in there and pull it. Uh, so we'll find out when we get this one in the shop. But this one's a totally complete, really nice. Has both seats in it. So having both seats with the springs, because this has like this weird little cutout in the middle for the shifter. That's really hard. I mean, the ashtrays here, the gauges are in it, correct steering wheel. Really hard to get them this complete. So, the only things that I don't like about this truck are somebody has this bracing. I don't know if it's a real big guy or something that was stepping on these steps, but for some reason they have these straps going from this piece up to the cab. And this isn't supposed to be there. The back of the cabs on all of these cab overs, it's very, very common for these things to be banged up because they had bodies up against them and whatever they had on this flatbed. And who knows, sometimes they probably strapped it to the cab and it would just beat up the back of the cab. So luckily this one doesn't have any hard dents in it. It looks like most of this could be popped out. This truck had a huge dump body on it. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is take these I-beams off of here, get this truck shortened just to the factory frame length. We won't be cutting the frame on this one and sliding the axles. We're just going to take this scrap metal off from this old tilt body. What it had on it was just like this truck over here, green truck body, and that dumps. So we took that off on the farm, just left it at this, but we'll cut all this scrap metal off of this one. Um, so this truck going to be a lot of fun to work on as well. like getting them really clean like that, and that truck does have a title. Here we have 61 Chevy C10 long bed, killer patina. Under the hood, we got a six cylinder. This motor turns, so this truck will very likely run and drive. Really, really nice patina truck. Has the typical door over swing damage. That's on almost all of them. Got a cool gun rack. Keys hang, hanging in the ignition. That's always a bonus. That saves us a lot of time getting them running. So is the original bed wood in the bed. Just a really nice, pretty straight truck this truck somebody will probably keep this one intact and keep this one original but it could end up with an ls as well but this one being as straight as it is and it's a long bed 
If it was a short bed, I'd say it'd probably be LS swap, but this truck we're probably gonna do the brakes on. So this will be run and drive and stop entitled when it leaves here in a couple weeks. Here we got another C10 long bed. Not sure the year, I think it was 62 or three C10 long bed. I'm still learning my front ends on these. We just started messing with these late 60s trucks, or early 60s rather. Haven't done too many of these, but they're becoming more and more popular now out on this side of the country, so. We got a V8 under the hood. We did pull on this one. It seems like it might be stuck, so. We're gonna have to dive more into this one. No guarantee that this one will run, but it, it's nice that it's all complete. We really thought when we pulled on this, it was gonna turn. Now on these V8s, me not being able to pull it by the fan doesn't really mean anything. Bill could hop under this thing, pull the inspection cover, grab it by the flywheel, the crowbar, and it probably might turn right over, so. But typically when the air cleaner's on them, that's a really good sign. When the air cleaner's off, anything can get down in the car, and lock up the motor. So when the air cleaner's on, it keeps the mice out, that's, that's good. So both of these trucks are good above the windshields. That's good, because these things like to go ahead and rust up in here when the mice get in that header panel. So we're rust free inside and out. Got this killer patina on this truck. This is a custom cab. We got the fancy front grille and the steering wheel. Spotlight on this one as well. Killer patina. Somebody put these custom toolboxes on here. And this lid, that lid is super heavy, but really functional. I can't see anybody taking these out. Honestly, if I were to LS swap this truck and keep it, I'd absolutely want these. I'd make them better and make them seal or something, but that's really functional if we're going to car shows and stuff. Stick your chairs in there, stick your extra clothing or whatever in there, or umbrellas. That's really nice. And you still have a ton of bed space. Nice original straight truck. It's got the deluxe trim on it. We're really excited about this one. Hopefully we get this run into driving with its original V8. That'd be really cool. All right, here we got a 1929 Model A. Really, really cool. I believe they call this a Tudor sedan. So all the seats are in it. Nice, complete, original car. Engine's in it. Everything's intact for the most part. So this truck doesn't, or I'm sorry, this car doesn't have the typical rust in the wheelhouses. So these cars like to go ahead and rot out in the back, all back here where everything would collect and moisture would sit. This car doesn't have that. This car will also have a title. We're never too successful getting these little four cylinders running so I don't want to go ahead and say it's gonna run because it's probably not they like to lock up pretty hard um, but we're still excited to get this car cleaned up really hard to find in this kind of condition they're nice and clean and rock free we also have some footage here we'll show you of this thing getting drug out of the barn it was in which is really really cool and whoever buys the car will provide them with that same footage but that's a really nice car. It's had some modifications over the years, like somebody got all this tar up here on top of this visor here. I guess they were getting wet. Just a nice old straight car. You don't find them too often. This was the this was the door lock here. I guess he didn't want to have any passengers and this lock was giving him a problem. So they went ahead and put this tie on here so the door couldn't pop open. Guess he didn't want any friends in the car. So stay tuned for this one. We'll be getting to this in a couple weeks. All right, everybody, so please stay tuned. We're gonna be putting out individual videos on each one of these vehicles. If you're interested, you can get a hold of me now, 412-335-6100 or ironcitygarage at gmail.com. But stay tuned, we'll be getting into all of these. We'll have in-depth videos of each one, and I hope you guys are enjoying the content, and we'll see you soon.